Today we are also welcoming Barack Obama to the Hawkeye State with ObamanomicsOutsource.com, a new website highlighting the President's failures of outsourcing, failures that sent hard-earned tax dollars overseas. President Obama's failures on outsourcing and the economy are some of the many reasons his campaign continues to struggle here in Iowa. After nearly four years of broken promises and empty rhetoric, Iowans have become sour on the president. Since President Obama won Iowa in 2008 by over 130,000 votes, his popularity has decreased dramatically. In 2010, Republicans took the governor's office and made large gains in our state legislature. The Republican Party of Iowa has erased a voter gap that was over 110,000 voters when Obama was inaugurated, and we now hold a 21,000 voter registration advantage over the Democrats for the first time in six years. <laughs> President Obama is now in a dead heat with Mitt Romney here in Iowa and is becoming more unpopular every day. Iowa may have launched Barack Obama in 2008, but rest assured, Iowa will be the state that sends him packing in 2012. <laughs> At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the next congressman from the 1st Congressional District, Ben Lang. <laughs> Spiker, and thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you taking the time. Obamanomics, Outsource.com is just one example of why I'm running for United States Congress. Washington, D.C. and President Obama are spending our future away, spending dollars overseas while our debt sores and future generations are saddled with the bill. My three daughters, one, three, and five, are $150,000 in debt. I come from the working class, and taxpayers would be shocked to know how their hard-earned money was spent on projects that sp sent jobs and billions of dollars overseas. Remember, Bruce Braley said, the stimulus plan, $800 billion, is absolutely critical to the U.S. economy. Even today, in the editorial in the Cedar Rapids Gazette, he claims the president's bet is paying off. Folks, it's simply unacceptable. President Obama and Washington politicians like my opponent, Bruce Braley, are part of the problem, not part of the solution. And hard-working Iowans like my family and I, we know it. So while President Obama and folks like Bruce Braley borrow money from countries in Asia to fund jobs in Europe, Mitt Romney and I are focused on empowering the private sector to get folks right here in Iowa back to work. Whether it's failures on health care, energy, jobs, these guys, these suits in Washington, D.C., they don't get it. And we need to get them out of office. Obamanomicsoutsource.com is just the latest tool of many that will allow Iowans to see specific examples of how President Obama has failed our state by focusing on jobs in other countries. And I'm pleased to introduce the gentleman that's going to show us all the shocking details about President Obama's outsourcing failures. Help me welcome Chairman Reince Priebus. Well, good morning. Good morning. We're here in Cedar Rapids today to hold President Obama accountable for his broken promises on his massive $831 billion stimulus. He promised Iowans and all Americans that his stimulus would create millions of shovel-ready jobs, and clearly it failed. Instead, however, President Obama's stimulus and other policies created jobs overseas. Yes, stimulus money that was supposed to save our economy and create jobs here in Iowa went to companies and projects in foreign countries. He sent our recovery overseas. It's time for him to answer for that. Lately, lately, President Obama's campaign has been launching false attacks on outsourcing. That got us, and that, and, and it, it has all been fact-checked by many media outlets. None of it is true. It's intellectually dishonest 
But that got us looking at President Obama's record. And it turns out that President Obama is the real outsourcer in chief. Here are the facts. Taxpayer dollars went to New Zealand, Finland, Indonesia, India, Mexico, Germany, Australia, Switzerland, China, Denmark, South Korea, the Dominican Republic, Thailand, Vietnam, Italy, Russia, Luxembourg, El Salvador, Great Britain, Spain, Japan, and France. You can check all of these facts at, at ObamaNomicsOutsource.com. You can check it out for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about hard-working Iowans taxpayer dollars, dollars that were supposed to save Iowa jobs, to create jobs for families in Cedar Rapids. And President Obama and the Democrats in Congress sent that money to foreign countries. Millions of dollars wasted, jobs gone, opportunities squandered, the recovery sent overseas. That money was supposed to help people here in the Midwest, not create jobs in East Asia. And here's the kicker. You know what President Obama promised four years ago? He said that he would, quote, create jobs that pay well and can't be outsourced. We know that this president is in love with the sound of his own voice. We, lo we know that he's in love with the man in the mirror. But unfortunately for this president, and what, what doesn't work in Iowa is that he's a guy that can't keep a promise. And at the height of an economic recession, President Obama and his fellow Democrats borrowed money from countries like China to fund and create jobs in countries like China and New Zealand and Finland. They added hundreds of billions of dollars to our national debt, which stands at an astonishing $15.8 trillion. Here's one example. Fisker Automotive received $500 million in loan guarantees from American taxpayers to build electric cars. Then they took their money and decided to produce their $100,000 electric sports cars in Finland. Great for Finland. A slap in the face to Iowa workers. Cars in Finland, solar panels in Mexico, and economic stagnation in the United States, that's the stimulus. That's the economic policies of Barack Obama, and that's the hypocrisy of what this president is trying to spread across this country. Misinformation about outsourcing from the king of outsourcing, Barack Obama. If the Barack Obama campaign wants to talk about outsourcing, they should answer to Iowans, why did President Obama send your money overseas? Why did his stimulus create jobs in foreign countries? And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Based on your estimation, what percentage of the stimulus went overseas? You know, it's, it's, it's tough to answer because it's billions of dollars. Some of the money hasn't been spent. Some of it's loan guarantees. But I can tell you this. It's billions of dollars that we don't have to waste. So and it's know. billions of dollars that this president shouldn't be spending of taxpayer money to create jobs in spin, spin, Finland, China, Mexico, and all of the above. Clearly, on the other side of the fence, Mitt Romney has also been attacked for this very same thing. So, how do you defend his actions uh, up against what you're talking about? Well, for one thing, this president's waging, uh, I would say, a campaign of distractions and distortions. With all of President Obama's resources, research, research teams, he hasn't found any examples of Mitt Romney outsourcing any jobs anywhere. It's false. It's been, it's been proven false by fact checkers across America. They haven't found one example of it. And listen, you can't hold uh, this president accountable unless you're going to be honest about what his record is. He can't level charges about outsourcing against Mitt Romney and expect us to st stand silent. as his own horrible record of the ultimate sin. And the ultimate sin is taking taxpayer money and sending it overseas under the guise of creating jobs in America only to see all of that money squandered. And some of these companies are not even solvent or they're near insolvency. That's the Obama record. How does Mitt Romney fix it? 
Well, for one thing, you stop trying to spend your way out of a recession. I mean, for one thing, you don't you don't always come forward with stim stimulus programs and, and, and using taxpayer money to somehow dig your way out of a hole by creating a bigger deficit, which, uh, by the way, the president promised to cut in half by the end of his uh, first term. Obviously, we're not even close to that. Creating more debt. You know, listen, I happen to believe that a country that has to bury its uh, kids in an avalanche of debt can't rest in any vestige of the moral high ground. And so I think that it's time for a president that knows how to make a promise and keep a promise. And this president hasn't been able to do it. I mean, if you're being fair about it, I mean, we cut the deficit in half, didn't do that. Get the debt under control. He's on a trajectory to accumulate more debt than every single president before him combined. What's he running on? What's his message? I mean, it, it, what is he proud of? He doesn't want to talk about Obamacare. He doesn't want to talk about the stimulus. All he can talk about is George Bush. It's ridiculous. He should run on his record. He can't. What's the primary principle that separates Rocky economics from Obama economics? You have to say what's the top thing that makes a difference. Well, I think the difference is, is that you can't take taxpayer money to help create uh, government jobs to get people to work. You have to create an economic environment where small businesses can thrive, get government out of the way, lower small businesses' burden so they can hire more people and they can make money and they can live the American dream. The president today is going to talk about making middle, the middle class tax cuts extended. Um, Romney has said that he's in favor of extending those to even more people. How does that help this bottom line? Well, for one thing, it's another dishonest, uh, political maneuver by this president. And the president knows it. I mean, the president's a smart person. He knows it's a sham, uh, this idea uh, of his, uh, his latest uh, tax increase uh, extension on, on individuals. But what he also understands is that 840,000 small businesses in this country are going to be affected by a tax increase that President Obama is now espousing as a political maneuver across the country. 840,000 businesses that really can't afford to pay more money to fund Barack Obama's failed stimulus plans. And so um, it doesn't work. It will cost this country about 1% of our GDP in a country that only grew at 1.6%, it's a sham. He knows it's not going to pass. It's a political maneuver. And you see even Democrats aren't agreeing with the president on it because they understand they're not going to go back into their states and campaign with small business owners saying, wait a second, you want to, uh, I'm the one that you want to attack here and increase my taxes at a time I can barely make ends meet? It's a sham. How does the RNC and Mitt Romney combat the claim that he can't relate to the average guy coming from an agriculture background, coming from a middle class background? Well, I mean, I think one way you do it is that you come out to Iowa. I mean, we, and, 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 and you're going to see uh, Mitt Romney in Iowa. You're going to see a team led by A.J. Spiker and volunteers behind me that are busy going door to door, calling people individually, one on one, neighborhood by neighborhood. I mean, that's the way you have to you have to operate nowadays. It's not a it's not an air war. It's a, it's a ground war, and it's getting the message out person by person that this country is on a trajectory that's not healthy for this country. We are not better off today than we were three or four years ago. This president hasn't fulfilled the mission that he promised that he would fulfill as president. And therefore, after doing a job review, you look at this president's record, we don't need another four years of this misery. And I think that's the message that we have to bring. I think a lot of people, oh, I'm from Wisconsin, I think we're pretty similar. Um, I think the general feeling of people that even people who supported Barack Obama, is that people are disappointed. They're disappointed in the fact that he didn't complete the mission. And on top of it, he almost didn't even try to complete the mission as he spelled out in 2008. Bringing people together, red, red states and blue states will go away. I mean, it's all division. It's all, everything is, is just divisive nastiness across the board. And, that wasn't the bill of goods that uh, the president uh, sold us back in 2008, and we're going to call him on it. Can Mitt Romney relate to the average island? Absolutely, of course. Um, thank you for coming and answering questions. I do have a question about the delegates. I just wonder how we're going to secure a, a spot for Romney at the national convention 
when Ron Paul continues to win delegates across the nation. He won Iowa, um, Maine, Minnesota. And do you think Romney can really beat Obama? Oh, absolutely. I mean, not only are we going to beat Barack Obama, we have to beat Barack Obama for the sake of liberty and freedom and the very idea of America. It's not a matter of whether we can beat Obama. We must beat Barack Obama in order to preserve the American dream in this country. And so um, I think that there's no doubt about it. Our country is on a pathway and a trajectory that's unsustainable. And more stimulus in European health care isn't going to isn't going to dig us out of the hole that we're in. And so, as far as the nomination goes, I mean, there is absolutely no question. Uh, Mitt Romney is the nominee. There, there isn't going to be any doubt about that. Uh, we're working well with the Ron Paul campaign, and we're excited about uh, all of Ron Paul's supporters being a part of our uh, party and our and our movement. And the movement is is to save America. All right. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Yeah, I was wondering how you guys were doing.